What's up, my friends? Sorry that I'm a few moments late. Apparently, I jarked up my foot real good. So, getting here, <laughs> getting here wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be. Every step was a problem. But here I am. We're here to talk about the rage that's floating around about the three hundred dollar store championship LGS entry fees for the whole. Urza's saga craziness. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Let me uh, let me do the usual share in the Discord link, share in the stream link in the Discord, and then we will we will go from there. We'll talk about why people are angry. I'll weigh in with my opinion. This is definitely a divisive. This is a divisive conversation. It's, there's people who feel both ways about this. This is not a. Uh, Everybody feels the same way. So some people are raging, and then some people are on board with the store charging 300 bucks. So it is, it's an interesting subject for discussion. Okay, let's see here. Uh, switch this up and have a little sip of my magical foot healing beverage. And let's say our hellos. What up, Gossett, Millmaster, Eng, Jess, Kensicky, Ray's, Keebler, Sandwich, Zach, Ferguson, Shelton, Patrick, Yamagoro, uh, ba -ba 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 who else we got in here? Uh, Justin, Ned, Felonius T, Chicken, Break Stop, David, Zircon, Potts, uh, Brent, Trustworthy, Kurt, Heavy Metal, Masad, uh, Ru. I think I got everybody. Hello to everybody whose names I said. Hello to anybody whose name I didn't see in my romper room. I see Billy and Jami and Jim Jam and Flim Flam and Nip Nop, <laughs> which all could totally be people's names on here as well so so my friends there is there is going to be some there is going to be some context obviously required to explain all of this stuff right because people's gut reaction is what is going on i mean even carly when i mentioned just what the stream was titled she's like wait what and then i explained it to her she's like okay i get it now it definitely um it definitely evokes a response. I remember reading about this, I'd say, within the last 48 hours. And then my buddy who runs the LGS I go to sent me, <laughs> he sent me it on Facebook like half an hour ago, hour ago. And we were chatting about it. And I went, you know what? It's a perfectly fine subject for discussion in a live stream. Why not? That's what we'll talk about. What up, Cosmic? What up, Jordan? What up, Sum? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? So, let's let's lay out the basics here. There is a game store that has set a three hundred dollar entry fee for, and this is like a regular LGS. They have set an entry fee of three hundred dollars for their store championship. Now. On the surface of it, you'd just be like, well, they're just trying to they're just trying to jack as much money as they can from people. But they don't actually want anyone to pay that three hundred dollar fee. Now that's where it gets even more confusing, right? Where you go, wait, what? So they're charging three hundred dollars, but they don't want people to pay three hundred dollars? How does this work? What's the deal? Well, one of the things you definitely need to know about this store championship in particular is it has, if I'm not mistaken, the most desirable promo ever given away for a store championship. You've got a special Urza Saga, which has a current market value of about $300, all right? So, you have a game store, and they decide, hey, we want our store championship to be for locals who actually come to the store and play in the event. So what we're going to do is we're going to limit entry to people who are regulars to the store because 
we don't want people coming from other areas who aren't regulars, who don't support the store, and are just here to try and win the champion for this one card, and then they'll be gone in the wind again and never actually contribute to the business, right? So they originally wanted to exclude anybody who wasn't a regular from being able to play in the event. But that goes against the terms and conditions that Wizards of the Coast has given for WPN events like this. So they're not allowed to do that. But what they are allowed to do is turn around and go, okay, we're going to have an entry fee of $300 to the tournament. But if you've played in three events in this store for in the last year, the entry fee is waived. So the entry fee will only be charged to people who aren't actual regulars of the store who don't come in and play regularly. So anybody who just shows up the day of going, I'm just here to try and win that card and not su like support your business in any way, they will have to pay $300 to compete. And obviously, that completely discourages all of the, the grindy individuals who are like, I don't care about your store. I don't care about supporting your business. I'm here to make money, and that's all it's about. So I want to win this card because it's worth a bunch of money. And that's it. Like, I don't care about your store's environment. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about giving your business any money. So by making the fee $300, well, if you win, it's like you bought the card for $300. And obviously, that's going to discourage people from wanting to get involved with it. So that's basically what it boils down to. And this has led to certain people going, yo, this sounds perfectly fine to me. They want to basically protect their store. They want to go, the locals get to play in it. And if you're some rando who we don't know and you're not supporting the store and you haven't been a part of keeping the business open, why should we let you just waltz in? And like, we have a bunch of casuals who just play whatever. And it's like, we're going to have our championships, but it's just a bunch of newbie McGoobers or whatever. And then all of a sudden, people who are serious about magic show up and just walk off with the big prize, leaving all of your regulars who constantly support your business out in the cold, right? So you come up with this, and there are a bunch of people going, I would never support that business. Well, if you were already supporting that business, you wouldn't be charged the $300, right? So, hmm, hmm, right? I, um, I feel like personally, for me, I'm totally fine with this because I have seen firsthand what people will do in terms of just trying to like grind a little bit of extra out of game stores and stuff like that, right? Where you've got, you've got, um, for example, when they had this promotion for the Xbox, PlayStation and all that, that was tied into magic where they had these special little boosters. If you bought, if you bought the, um, like if you bought the Magic the Gathering game for a uh, whatever console, PlayStation, whatever it was, right? You buy that game and then they will give you a code. You take that code to the game store, to any LGS, and the LGS will give you a booster pack that has a special card in it, right? And most of those, most of the consoles had garbage cards like Soul of Ravnica, cards nobody cares about. But I believe it was the PlayStation one had scavenging ooze and that's when scavenging ooze was like they had only printed it once it was in standard at the time like it was a valuable card at the time it was like a 20 dollar card or something like that so we had people coming down from toronto which is like an hour and a half drive coming to the game store with these printed out sheets going hey um i'm uh, i'm here to redeem my xbox code and you can you can tell, you can pretty much tell what these people are like. I dealt with a bunch of them and you know they're driving around to different game stores doing this at different game stores. I even asked people at other game stores in the city, yo, did you have people who looked like this showing up together with these printouts of their of their like legit codes they definitely haven't already redeemed? Because there was no way you could punch this code into a system and it would get redeemed, right? Wizards didn't have that set up. So it was basically like an honor system. So you had people who were driving around trying to slurp up all the supply of these. And each store 
didn't get that many of them. So whenever I encountered these people and they came into the store and I was the one behind the counter, I went, oh man, it's cool that you got the game and these things are really popular. We're actually completely out. You know what I mean? And they'd be like, oh. And then they would just leave and go to another game store in the city and go from one to another. But they were 100% had already gotten them. There's no question about it. This wasn't somebody who's like actually the intended recipient of this, where it's like they bought the game and now they're going, oh, I'm going to go try out Magic and get a pack or whatever. It's 100%. These people were riding around skis in as many stores as they could. So... I've seen the angles that people shoot with LGSs and there's a particular mentality in Magic where people think like, I basically should be paid for playing this game. Like if I show up to an event, I should be given cards worth more money than I spent on the event. I should be, like my time is super valuable. These are the people who like every little angle they're trying to grind the stores on when the stores are barely making any money in the first place. And I am very much biased towards LGSs. I love LGSs. I know a lot of them are passion projects of the owners. And they're selling magic because they love magic. Not because magic makes you a lot of money. It genuinely doesn't, right? Magic is, magic is one of the margin poorest products that you can get. Where basically stores are lucky if they can make 10%. So they buy a product, they pay like 90% of what they're selling it for versus board games and stuff like that where it's 50-50. They buy it for something, what they sell it for, they get 50% of that money. Like they make way more money on board games. A $35 board game has a way better margin than a $35 collector booster. So LGS is already getting by on thin margins because they're not run by savvy businessmen. Savvy businessmen wouldn't open an LGS. LGSs are essentially almost money losing endeavors. And like the one that I helped out at, the guy who owned it, basically he would run free Friday Night Magics. Everybody could come and play for free. And then he would give everybody who played a booster pack and more packs to the winners. Like it wasn't like you had to um, like pay into the store or anything. So it's just like basically it seems to me like all the people who are ranting and raging about this are people who picture themselves in the scenario where they're being shunted out of it. But those are the kind of people that basically make everything worse for everybody, right? I should be able to show up at the store that I don't support in any way, dominate and take the best thing that these people who are constant sources of supporting the business shouldn't have because I'm more hardcore about magic. It should just be about the results. And it's like, well, of course you're going to think that because you stand to financially gain from that. It's it's purely from a stance of greed. So there's no rule against the game stores charging an insanely high entry fee. And you just go, no, I don't want to pay that. Okay. All right. That's, as far as I'm concerned, way better than letting people come in who are going to not just, like, you got to understand these people who do this. They also cheat. I'm not saying every single one does, but the higher the sweaty grinder level on somebody, the higher the incidence of them being an actual cheater who will misrepresent rules to their opponents, who will make slimy plays, who will make judge calls not to actually get things resolved, but to try and intimidate or shake the other player. It's, I mean, bro, you can't tell me otherwise. I have run so many magic tournaments and dealt with so many people. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm 100% in the LGS's corner with this, right? It's like if you, if it comes along with bad optics and it makes some people not want to come to your store, were they going to come anyways? It's like one of those people's like, I'd never be a customer here. You're already not. You don't even live in this part of the world really, right? But no, but I should be able to come in and win this $300 card. Like they're just, they've got the visions of their what their greed would net them and fuck everybody else. That's the mentality. That's how it comes across to me. So when I look at it, I just go, yeah, yeah. When I, at first you just go 300 bucks, that's insane. And then you see it and you go, oh, it's just to stop the skeezers. And all the regular players just get to play for free like it should be. Cool. I don't have a problem with a game store going, we're having the store championships and the store championships are for people who play in the store and have played in the standard season and all this stuff. 
Like, if you go to a store, right, and you go, hey, I'm new in the neighborhood and I'm looking for a game store to come and hang out at, they're probably just going to be like, oh, cool, whatever, man. You just come in and be a part of it, right? Like, it, it to me, is totally fine. It's totally fine. I have no issue with it. And I totally think that everybody who's getting worked up about it is coming from a, pr- a place of personal greed, right? Like, magic players are so greedy that they expect to be given stuff for showing up. I expect to make money off of playing magic. There's the huge mentality that Wizards has fostered. And Wizards has also left stores out in the cold by getting rid of of MSRP, right? They get rid of MSRP and then they just go, stores can charge whatever they want, like stores already could. But it leads to a situation where when Wizards cranks the price on a product like Modern Horizons 3, you can see people online going, I went to my store and they're so greedy. They've got Thunder Junction there and the packs are like $5. But then it's more than double for the Modern Horizons. These greedy store owners, because they know people want that. And it's like, no, no, it's because Wizards sets the price much higher for the distributors, the distributors set the price much higher for the stores, and the stores are making the same profit margin on these products. But anybody who walks in off the street just sees two things that look identical. What's the difference between these boosters? They look the same, they cost the same to produce, so Wizards must sell them for the same price to the store, right? But the store wants two or three times as much for these greedy stores, right? Like... I should come to your store, spend $5 to get into a tournament, leave with at least $40 worth of cards, and maybe I'll buy a bag of chips and you can make a quarter. You know, it's it's absolutely, it's absolutely insane to me how entitled Magic players are. Like the store that I, that I helped out at, basically I watched the most crazy behavior. This guy comes in and... He wants to buy a bundle. And then another guy comes up right at the register when he's about to buy the bundle. Go, don't buy that. You can get it online for $5 cheaper. And this isn't my store. And this isn't my money. I'm not the one who gets the money from this at all. But I turn to him and I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind right now? What are you doing? And he's like, what? And I'm like, you just walked up to the register here and told this guy not to buy this product. You come here every fucking week. And you play in the events that this guy runs for free. And you get a free booster pack for playing every fucking week. He lets everybody play in this event for free. How do you think he pays for the lights and the building, all right? So why are you telling people not to buy products? Oh, oh, I didn't. Yeah, you just did. Now you're calling me a liar. You think I'm an idiot? I just watched you do it, bro. You did it right here. It's one thing to be at the back of the store where you guys are trading and somebody's talking about whatever and you toss out that maybe they can buy something cheaper elsewhere. It's another thing to intercept a sale in progress, you fucking clown. What are you doing? Do you know how hard it is for this business to even make money and how much he cares about people and how much shit he gives away for free? You're happy to come here and take this shit for free every week? I've never seen you buy anything. And now you're sitting here undermining actual sales? The fuck is wrong with you? And he like left. And then his friend came in and was like, hey, you made him cry. And I was like, good, good. Then he just started to say something else. I'm like, listen, listen, before you want to defend him, do you want to know what he did? Do you know what he did? And then I said it. I'm like, is that the behavior you want to, is that, is that what you're here to defend? Is that what you're here to defend? Like, you spend your money however you want. I'm not saying you have to buy from the LGS, but the insane, I am just thinking you could save $5. It's like, bro, what do you think creates this communal game space for us to all play in, you idiot? Like, it just, it's crazy how entitled people are. Where they're just like, well, no, like, I don't care about the underlying metrics of your business. I don't care if you go go under. I 100% care about me. But you shouldn't care about you and your business. You should also care about me and giving me stuff. And it's like, like, how can you be this ignorant? How can you literally take and take and then turn around and hose the store? It's insane. It's insane. So, I... I hate how certain people behave, where they're just, it's just angle shooters 
who are like, how can I get financially ahead? I'm not here to contribute to an enjoyable environment. I'm not here for a night of gaming. I'm here because this is work for me and I deserve to be making money. No, you don't deserve to make money off of magic. You know who does? The fucking game store, idiot, right? That's who deserves to make money. The people who set up a business to say, I'm going to sell this product and provide a game space for it. Like, how many games do you play? Hey, uh, do you want to come out and shoot some hoops? Well, how much money am I going to make off of it? What kind of promos are you going to give me to come? No, bro, it's like a game we play for fun. Uh, excuse me? No, no. What, what do I get, okay? Like, first of all, I shouldn't have to pay anything to do it. And secondly, it should make me money, okay? Hobbies equal jobbies. Where's my cash? It's gross. I find it disgusting, right? Like, I'm old school. I watched, I watched Magic turn from a game to a financial commodity. There was a time in Magic's history when where people got like a, a card they were excited about. They were just excited about the card. But it slowly changed into somebody's like, I got this card. It's $25. I got this card. It's $50. And that's always tacked on. Magic got turned into... A, mini's com a mini commodities market and all these backpack grinder trader individuals who are like, okay, okay, I know you run a store, but here's how it should work. First of all, you should give me a bunch of free stuff for coming in here so I come out financially ahead. Secondly, I should be able to go into the back of your store and sell my own cards to people. Like, hey, I only give buy list value and trade in and take full value because I consider this a business. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. So... As far as I'm concerned, I'm 100% on board with the with the $300 entry to keep greedy dickheads who think that, hey, I don't need to support a store. I should totally be able to waltz in, take this crown jewel that should rightfully go to somebody who's actually totally part of the community. I should just be able to snag that because I want to be financially ahead. I deserve it. You absolutely don't. You absolutely don't. 100%. 100%. And magic has engendered a mentality of greed. It starts right up at the top with the company and it trickles all the way down through everything, everything. And I don't like it. You know, I've, just, I've been around, I guess I've just been around for too long. I've been around for too long to see all this. So. The people who are complaining about it, I can't see that. Like once you have the actual details, I can't see that. Anybody complaining about it is complaining about it from any other angle than I want to be the one who gets a bunch of money. Fuck everybody else. I don't care if this place goes out of business. I don't care if it burns to the ground if I get $6 out of the deal. You know, it's, uh, it's frustrating, man. LGSs are like, like a special beast to me. They're, they're created out of passion. And they, they definitely don't have good margins. And to watch the stuff they got to deal with, where people just end up like coming in and going, yo, I should be able to use your table space for free. And your products, I can get them for cheaper on Amazon. So I'm basically going to treat your store like a pop-up Amazon display thing. And I'm going to look and go, oh, I can pay $4 less for this online, so I will. And it's just like, oh, okay, so why should you be allowed to play here? Uh, because I'm me and I should be able to get to do whatever I want. Go into a fucking pizza place and be like, man, I really like the atmosphere here. And like there's other people to eat pizza with. So I brought my own ingredients. I'm going to come back into the kitchen and uh, cook up my own pizza using your stuff. And uh, by the way, give me 10 bucks. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. LGS is going to business all the time, all the time, all the time. And people are so greedy and so grindy. Not everybody, obviously. But just more and more of these entitled individuals, it feels like. And it's like, where do you think you're going to go to play this stuff with people? The mentality of people going, I should be able to use your play space because I'm a customer. I bought a can of pop from you. You made 14 cents on that can of pop. Like if somebody said to me, Oh, I support your business by buying cans of pop. I'd be like, it's 15 bucks a can, bro. What? Well, if you want to pretend like you're supporting the business, you're going to have to actually do that. You realize that, right? Like, you know that there's rent and electricity. You know you know all the expenses that go along with you, even just having your home? 
Yeah, do you know how businesses work? Do you, you realize that this is a business, right? Like, that's what this is. This is a business. And businesses are meant to make money, not to make you money. I didn't set up my game store so that you could come out financially ahead. That was never part of my plan. Uh, pretty much all the LGS owners I've ever met were like, yo, I loved playing games coming up and I loved having a place to go and I want to give back by doing the same thing, right? So yeah, it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It really it really annoys me. It really annoys me, you know? That's a, you know what? That's a good point. Just using the washroom, the cost of water and stuff will exceed the profits of buying a can of pop too. That's right. That's right. So yeah, I uh, like, I don't say that people have to use LGSs and I'm not like, yo, but the thing is, if you only focus on yourself, you're going to lose everything. That's how we end up where there will only be two places you can buy things, Walmart and Amazon, because you decided to save yourself 50 cents, because you decided to save yourself a dollar. Here's what happens. The businesses, the other ones start to close down. And then once there's nobody left to compete with them, guess what? The prices go way up because Walmart and Amazon don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about your community. They don't care if everybody in your town runs out of money and has to live on the street. Like if you don't take the time to support your community, who's going to? Who's going to? Like, how do you think society functions? If you just go out, like, you need, you need to refocus your own personal greed into a greed to have businesses in your area. Like, obviously, that doesn't extend to just support terrible businesses. But at the end of the day, you lose what you don't support, right? And if there's no, if there's no more LGSs, how, but I, but I want to go and play with people. Well, you better make some friends. Well, I don't have any friends because I'm super selfish and only about myself. So I don't have a play group I can get together with. And now I can't go to the game store. And you can't shut down your game store. This is what I use as my second job. It's like, it's just, it's really annoying. So you got Wizards of the Coast that threw... LGS is to the wolves by just going, we're, we're, uh, we're going to get rid of MSRP. We're going to bring in secret layers and just, we're going to cut out the singles. Like we're already ma making it so you can barely make any money on sealed product. And now we're going to come for the singles market too. We're just take, we're taking everything. Basically we're going to step on your neck and pretend that's a hug and oh, you can't breathe. I can't hear you. Ching, ching. Right? So it's, it frustrates me, man. It frustrates me. As somebody who's been going to LGS since, since I was like 15 years old. I've been, I've been going for like 30 years, bro. You know? And just seeing the way that people treat this and the entitlement. Like, I should totally be able to breeze in and snag this prize. Well, what about the store and all its players? Uh, me. And just me. And if it's not about me, I'm mad about it. Be mad, bro. Be mad. You know? It's it's crazy. It's crazy to me. So yeah. That's my that's my opinion on all of that. That's my opinion on all of that. Right? So the game store, the game store choosing to go the three hundred dollar route made me laugh. I laughed. I was like, and then I saw people raging about it. And I'm like, I can't think of anybody raging about this other than from a position of personal greed. Because what else could it be? Right? What else could it be? All these people, report them! Report them to the WPN! Report them for what? They can charge whatever tournament entry fee they want. Yeah, but like, they gotta get punished! For what? They're obeying the rules. They were gonna do something that was against WPN rules, found out it's against it, and went, oh, okay, we won't do that. And then they found a way to accomplish the goal they wanted to accomplish within the rules. So what are you going to do? The only people who really are going to be genuinely mad about this have to be the grindy kind of people who only care about themselves and are just about enriching themselves at the cost of everybody else, right? Like, how, what, what, other, what other position could you have when you understand the facts that would, that would lead you to feel that way, right? 
At the end of the day, charging a $300 fee like that, if it's going to drive away people from your business, it's not a good idea to drive away people from your business. But it's almost like it's not going to drive away people from the business and it's just set up to stop people who would never be customers. But nobody's going to admit that. Nobody's going to admit that they're like, yo, I'm going to go and do this, but it's not because I'm greedy and whatever. It's like, oh, okay, then why are you traveling two hours to get to this one store where it's like, well, it's not because they're easy meat and I can just like scam this thing for my own personal gain. It's because I, just, I, I should be able to play there because I'm me and this is important to me. And it's like, you just want them, admit it, admit it. You're greedy and you want the money. We all want money. We all like money. I love money. I want more money, but I'm not going to turn around. Oh, I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe that you want the people who are regularly a part of your business and support your business to get the most advantage from these events that are meant to support your business. Huh. Yeah. We don't want to give away the top prize to somebody who's not invested in our business whatsoever. Whoa, what a shocking position to have, right? Right? So... It is what it is, man. It is what it is. And as far as I'm concerned, it's totally justified. Totally justified. And I have yet to see anybody's position to the contrary that didn't just scream, I'm greedy, me, me, me. That's it. That's it. Underneath anything they're saying, it's all, I'm greedy, me, me, me. So the store is doing what's best for an entire group of people. And you're upset that you can't hose these people over. I want to punish them through the WPA. It's like, are you even in the area of the store? No, but they need to get punished. Maybe you need to have a good look at who and what you are. Maybe reflect on why you're reacting this way. Maybe, just maybe, the problem is you, right? Because I can't think, I can't think of a good reason to be upset about this at all. At all. All I can think of is greed and self-centeredness. And I've seen so much of it in the magic community. More and more and more. And Wizards just keeps pushing the price of the products up. And making the cards poorer quality. Like, all of it. It's just... LGSs get hosed. And Wizards doesn't care. Right? So, Wizards has fostered this entire financialized mentality that leads to people fully believing that they should be able, I should just get everything and have to contribute nothing. And it's like, why? Like, how did you come to this conclusion? I, I don't understand genuinely how you came to this conclusion that you should get this, really, you know? It should just be about play skill. No, the store championships should be about the store and their championship. So it should be a lead up event where the people who come to the stores have this culmination event. That's what it should be about. If you want events that are purely about the best of the best, guess what? That's what the pro tour is for. The store championships are for the stores and they should be for the people who go to those stores, not for randoms to come in and try and skis. That's it. It's real simple. It's real simple. Millmaster, no, they're not guilty of the same greed at all because they're not trying to get people to pay the $300 fee. They want everyone to enter for free. They wanted a tournament that was completely free just for their regulars. The $300 fee is to discourage people from even playing, not to collect money. So ultimately, nobody's going to pay the $300 fee and they're going to have the regulars playing for free and that's it. So clearly, the store absolutely just wants people to be able to play. That's it. That's it. The greedy stores will come up with some skeezy way to have one of their friends win the promo and then sell it on or whatever, or just quietly try to not have a store championship. There's lots of different ways that greedy LGS is skis. But turning around and saying, if you're not somebody who regularly comes to the store and you haven't participated in any events in the last year or whatever, then you have to pay a $300 entry fee that's how much the card costs. So they just went, why are you going to try and win a card that you could just buy for the same price? That's not greed. That's not greed. You could maybe argue it was greed if they tried to charge 
50 bucks a head because people might go for it, right? But at the end of the day, nothing about this says greed to me from the store because they're not trying to get as much money as they can, right? Millmaster, what do you mean it's not theirs? The promo was provided by Wizards to the store for the store championship. The championship is the stores. And WPAN rules allow for them to set whatever entry fee they want. So, yeah. Where's the greed? Where's the greed of setting up an event that nobody has to pay to play in, right? When they're regulars. And you just have regulars who paid nothing. Because that's what they were doing originally. Changed it to $300. They had it set up where only regulars can play. It's free. And whoever wins gets the promo. As it should be, right? There you go. It's that simple. I'm 100% on board. And I don't see any angle of it being greedy from the store. Unless you consider wanting the regulars of the store to be able to play in an event for free. Greedy then we have def different definitions of greed. For me, greed is trying to get financial gain, right? This is just a, hey, I'm trying to protect my community, right? I, I, I want my people to be able to play. So, yeah. The greed is that the LGS is leveraging the desirability of the promo in a greedy way. Where's the, where's the greed? They're trying to run the event for free for people who are regulars who you know what man that's cool if that's what you believe excellent we can totally have different opinions because i genuinely don't even understand what you're saying it doesn't make any sense to me but that's fine i've stated what i had to say and if you're not convinced that's cool man everyone's allowed to differ and like i said this one is divisive so if you consider it greedy cool i absolutely don't 100 percent Jailfish, what about people who can't play all the time? You mean not regulars or whatever? I'm sure if they're people who regularly show up to the store, it won't be an issue. Right? This is meant to discourage people who don't come to the store normally. This isn't a normal customer. This is some random person who is not part of the regular player base. We want the regular player base. I got no problems with that. Like, if you, if you go to a store every once in a while, and they know you, they're going to know you're not a grinder, and they're going to let you in for free. It's not going to be a problem. It's purely set up to keep unknowns out of the event so that they don't spike it, right? That works for me. Uh, some gift and five memberships. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. You are the member lord. Who'd you get? Merfolk Bear, Phillips, Sandwich Stormtrooper, and Her Ganma. Nice. Well, unlike... Unlike the game store, I am greedy. I want all the money. I'm charging each and every one of you $300 for being here. <laughs> Pay up. Where's my money? Y'all, every single one of you guys owes me $300. <laughs> Zircon, three times in a year qualifies as can't play all the time. Yup. Yep. The way it reads to me is if you're a local who's known to the store, you're going to be fine. And if you're not, then you're not. And that seems pretty straightforward and easy to deal with, right? What is the role of distributors other than being a middleman? Nothing. Distributors exist so that just to extract cash. Distributors cause a lot of hassles for LGSs where they'll hold the product ransom and go, if you don't spend enough money, we're not going to let you buy the good stuff. Also, if you buy a dog product, we won't take it back from you. Like, on top of that, we have some product. They did this with like Modern Horizons 2 or something like that, where they said, we got all this product from Wizards, but we're going to set some of it aside until it goes up in value and we won't sell it to you. Like, distributors basically are just there to bleed LGSs, right? That's the deal. That's the deal. Oh, look at Ollie being nice. He didn't get a membership, but he's thanking you some for giving other people memberships. Nicely done. Nicely done.
Uh, John, you know what? You're right as well. It does. It, the distributors do have warehouses where they can store a lot of product, and then the stores don't have to buy it all up front from Wizards. So perhaps I am being a little too reductive. I am, as I mentioned already in this, biased towards LGSs, 100%, right? I love LGSs. I've spent many, many years at a, at a range of different ones, and I don't like seeing them get host, right? I don't like seeing them get host. It's that it's it's as simple as that. So I mean the distributors the distributors also got hosed buying Markov Manor. Markov Manor was a garbage product that Wizards dumped on everybody. And Wizards does play games trying to manipulate the distributors too, where they'll be like, hey, we're having special events, uh, but you got to have a certain amount of Thunder Junction to make it happen in an attempt to try and make like, oh, if we get the game stores calling up distributors and asking for Thunder Junction, then the distributors will think Thunder Junction is more desirable than it is. So they'll order more too, right? So it, the, the way that I put it forth, I guess, is somewhat unfair to distributors. It's not like they serve no beneficial purpose, but they do a lot of things to lean on and squeeze LGSs, partially because LGSs are smaller businesses that can't buy in the volume that's necessary for distributors to really care about them that much, aside from like the biggest ones, right? So yeah, distrib distribution is a scapegoat for wizards as well. I agree, I agree with that. Heavy Metal, you just bought a Markov Manor bundle. <laughs> Tess is dead, Tace is dead. She a ghost now. She a ghost now. So yeah, Markov Manor was a complete scam of a set. Wizards of the Coast is cutting the bottom out of the game. It's it's just the unfortunate reality of it. They're extracting as much money as they can for the shareholders. That's the name of the game. So we've got insane power creep, policies that mostly hose LGSs, although Wizards has stepped back a little bit from that. And some of the stuff they're doing is more beneficial for LGSs now. But ultimately, ultimately, it's a really rough spot to be an LGS owner dealing with magic specifically. There are a bunch of LGSs that are turning more and more away from magic as like the main thing. And they'll still carry magic. But it's not as prominent. Because again, the margins are really not good on it. And Wizards keeps pushing the price up more and more and more. And people just blame the LGSs. They just want more, but it's Wizards. Wizards sets the tune. Everyone else dances to it, right? Huckleberry, how do I think Foundations will do? Well, them bringing back a core set style product is great, in my opinion. Because they basically went, everything's Commander! And then they'd have a standard set come out and go, we got Commander decks you can buy for it. And they just completely went, no, nah, we're not going to bother making products for Commander play for non-Commander players, really. And it's like, what is this? So having an entry onboard product for people is a good idea. I suspect that the price point on it is going to be pretty rough, though. So it's going to be like a mixed bag. Jack of Flames membership message says, good to see you again, Hatcher. I say good on the store for focusing on its home crowd in this instance. That's how I feel as well, bro. 100%. 100%. Thompson, the LGS where you are focuses on Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon more. I've seen more of a presence of Pokemon. Lorcana is making good headway as well. Like, Wizards of the Coast is arrogant and greedy. And they bring less and less to the table it feels like as we progress but they expect more and more and the focus on commander like they used to design for commander by going instead of making a card that says target opponent or target player discards two cards they make cards that say each opponent does and that was designing for commander but now designing for commander equals stuff like we had to have nadu in modern horizons why you're already greedy enough that you want to force rotation into modern. Why now 
do we also have to have these commander shenanigans? Why is that going on? Oh, well, we also have commander decks. And when asked why, why there are commander decks to go along with Modern Horizons, we get aggravatingly smug answers from people like Mark Rosewater going, the reason that we have commander decks with Modern Horizons is because we can't make modern decks at a price point you guys will accept. And it's like, you absolutely can though. You absolutely can. I don't know why you're saying you can't do this. You're the ones who make the cards. You're the ones who have the ability to do this. And it costs you no more money to make a good card than it does to make a jank card, right? Same art costs, same design costs, same printing costs. You absolutely could print modern decks. Actually, they would cost you less to make than the commander decks, even if you included a sideboard, because that would be 60 cards plus 15. That's 75 cards. That's 25% less cards than a commander deck. But you're going to pretend like we're the problem because we wouldn't pay $1,000 for a pre-constructed modern deck because you don't base it off your costs. You don't base it off reality. You base it off, well, the secondary market of all these cards, and you should be paying basically full price for them. It's... It's the most insane mentality. Wizards is paying way too much attention to the secondary market, and they've decided that Magic's casual audience is bigger and more important than anything else, and that Commander is the de facto casual thing. And they don't have to worry about balancing it because they're not in charge of the banning and whatever, so they're constantly power creeping it and making more busted nonsense, right? It's... Uh, and then they just they just gaslight us. They just they just straight up lie to us and go, "Oh, it's a shame that we can't do this, but it's your guys' fault. It's not our fault. It's not our fault that we're unwilling to pay the absurd prices that you feel you're entitled to." And that's a crackheaded position to hold. And we get told things like the play boosters aren't an attempt to get more money from you for less value because you're paying the same uh, per dollar, like per rare ratio. The dollar to rare ratio remains the same. That's what's going on. That's what we were told about play boosters. Meanwhile, two sets later, they quietly, without any announcement, drastically reduce the number of rares in play boosters. So they sold us this price increase as a, well, it's not a changing your dollar to, to rare ratio. And then they drastically change the dollar to rare ratio two sets later which must have been the plan all along, you know? It's just, it's maddening. It's maddening. So yeah, like there's just, there's so much going on that's rotting the roots of the tree. And at a certain point, the weight of it's just gonna give. It's just gonna give, right? Uh, Verde, what's the best way to support the magic community and the LGSs without supporting Wizards' greedy philosophy? It's impossible to engage with Magic the Gathering without supporting Wizard in some form or another. And I certainly don't hold the position that Wizards of the Coast should make no money for making Magic the Gathering. They are designing cards. They are making a game that people want. So they do deserve to earn profit off of it. But not, not like... We're going to keep making the cards poorer and poorer quality, where the foils you get are going to be cloudy and scratched out of the packs. The edges are all beat up. And literally, and this blows my mind, the foils from the little grocery store card game, these foils are better. Now, the card stock isn't better. This is like more flimsy cardboard stuff. But these were printed in Belgium, and the actual foiling process used on these is better than Magic the Gathering which is pathetic because they give these away for free at the grocery store when you're buying your groceries, right? Like it's, it's maddening to see how every other game makes like amazing foils and wizards just goes, well, how do we keep, how do we, how do we cut costs? And it's just straight up, give them a worse product. There was a time in Magic's history, and this is a long time ago, but there was a time in Magic's history where if the card quality was so bad, that they decided to burn the cards and not sell them because it would be an embarrassment to sell them. But under Chris Cox's reign, he decided that it doesn't matter how bad the card quality is, just ship it. We'll, we'll print it at a crazy speed. It doesn't matter how poor the cards are to the point where even regular cards warp like foils, which is mind blowing. I, I would put cards in the display case and I would walk by, like crack it out of a pack, put it in the display case. 
walk by like 30 minutes later and the cards contorted like like a like a circus acrobat and you're like what is this magic 30 i open packs of magic 30 they're printed to the same awful standards as everything else banged up edges poor quality and they wanted 250 dollars a pack and they wanted to go oh well they're not real magic cards. They're collector items and they're not meant to be played with. Really, if they're not meant to be played with, why is there a higher incidence of dual lands and sol rings in here? Which are specifically cards that commander players want, by the way. Shut up. No, it's it's just for collecting. So you can collect them. And if you want to know what it would be like to draft beta or whatever. Also, at the same time, we're going to send like celebrity screw cases with Ancestral Recall and Time Twister and stuff. Because we want you to treat these like they're super valuable and desirable. But at the same time, you can't even play with them. And they're just for collecting. We figured out a way around the reserve list, guys. And you have to pay 250 US a pack. And you have to buy four at a time. And we printed them to the poorest quality. It, it's it's emblematic. It's emblematic of the disregard that Wizards of the Coast has for its customers. And it runs rampant throughout the company to the point where they thought that they could hose D&D with the OGL nonsense. Where they're just like, oh, guys, we have to change our D&D license because of hate mongers. We got to stop the hate mongers. Don't you understand? And then everyone went, no, we're canceling our subscriptions. We're done with your products. And Wizards was like... Well, no, okay, you know, we're not going to make any changes. Okay, so how are you going to deal with those hate mongers you were talking about? You know, the awful people making hateful content that you were doing this for? What, what's your plan to address that? What do you mean? You literally told us that this is the stuff you needed to do to stop hate mongers. And it was enough that you felt you needed to take this action. So clearly, you're going to enact other plans to stop these hate mongers, right? Because they definitely exist. You didn't just make up a boogeyman to try and lie to us, did you? No, but we also have no plans to do anything at all. And they blew it so hard. Like, they thought that backpedaling on it, oh, well, let's just go back to the way it was. They lost Critical Role. Critical Role used to be hardcore into D&D. &D. And then they were just like, so you expect to just take part of our profits now with no work or whatever and, and just change things. Yup. No, that's okay. We're not going to go for it. And then they're like, okay, we're not doing it anymore. Business as usual. It's like, actually, we're moving on to other properties. No, but no, but you can't. That's not good for us. No, yeah, that's what happens. That's what you get. The company has nothing but disrespect for its customers. And it feels entitled to all of our money, right? It's, it's pure madness. It's pure madness. That'd be hilarious if they started to put the baseball gum into the packs. I liked that. That was my favorite part of sports card packs. I never cared about sport cards very much at all. But I liked the gum that came with it. Unless it was like super old and hard and fragmented and cut your gums. I've been there. You just got to put it in your mouth for a while and suck on it. You just take this, take this pink thing, put it in your mouth and suck on it for a while. Or you'll get cut. That was the deal. When it came, when it came to bubble gum. <laughs> also, I mean, putting the gum in there, scratching up your foils, getting the gum powder all over them. <laughs> so I don't know exactly like why Wizards thinks this is going to work. This insanely greedy way of doing things, especially with the D&D players. D&D &D players and Magic players are completely different beasts. D&D &D is a communal thing. And if you upset one player in a group, you can destroy that entire group quite easily. And you can lose a handful of people in one go. With Magic players, it takes way more because Magic has a lot more selfish, it's just about me, zero, tum zero sum mentality to it, right? There's a lot less community cohesion when it comes to that kind of stuff. So Wizards said that they had a five-year plan to double their profits and they actually succeeded and all the stuff they did isn't reproducible, but they turned around and said, now we're going to increase our profits by 50% in three years, which is pretty much the same thing as saying you're going to double them in five years. But it's getting like to blood from a stone level, right? Like the insanely accelerated production pace of things where Bloomborough is out already. 
right? Bloomborough came out at the beginning of this month. We're already moving into Dustmorn spoiler season in two days. The Dustmorn story is already five installments out, but people don't even know it because they wouldn't be expecting it. Nobody's expecting Dustmorn to come out in three weeks, but three weeks is the Dustmorn pre-release, guys. Three weeks from now is the Duskmorn pre-release. That's two standard sets, pretty much almost on top of each other. Pure madness. Hey, Shelly says, in the beginning was the board, and upon it, and upon it was you, Shelly. You are lord of the board. For a, for a very low asking price as well. For a princely sum of $2, you are lord of the board. Enjoy the glory. You are, you are gloried. <laughs> Millmaster, they lost the pulse of geekdom. They can't predict the nerd mentality. And they, they do feel fairly clueless now. It really does feel random. It definitely does feel random. So, there's very little about magic currently that makes it feel like it's in a healthy place. You know? Like, I don't know if it's that they decided that the older players are just starting to get too old and might start dropping off or whatever. But they're desperately trying to capture, like, we got to get the kids. We got to get more people in. And it's turned magic into, like, I saw a random Facebook post today, because I'm always looking at magic stuff, because what can I say? I'm obsessed. Let's be real. I'm obsessed with magic, right? So, it is what it is. I watched somebody complaining on a post saying, can we get more sets like Dustmorn, you know, magic high fantasy? And somebody responded with, magic isn't high fantasy, it's just fantasy. And... Magic's supposed to be high fantasy. That's what it was given to us as. That's the entire flavor of it. To me, it's the same as if they took Star Trek and went, Captain Picard is like, uh, he's a knight now. And he uses a sword and rides a dragon. And it's not in space and there's no spaceships. And then somebody just came along and was like, Star Trek's just a show. It's not science fiction. And it's like, well, that's what they're giving us now. But that's not what it's supposed to be. Right? Mr. Bill Super Chat says, hi. So diagnosed with early onset dementia, having a very hard time keeping track of triggers, multitasking, etc. Hoping you can suggest some simple commander slash deck so I continue to enjoy play. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bill, I'll be real with you. I don't have, first of all, let's put you up on the board. Thanks for the Super Chat, big boy. I don't have um, like a ton of experience with the best aspects of commander i've spent pretty much the majority of my magic experience playing like one-on-one -on -one magic so for commanders like my gut reaction is just pick a commander with like one ability right instead of a commander with a ton of different abilities pick a commander with one ability or get really weird and pick a commander from legends that's like vanilla and has no abilities and is just the overall flavor theme of your deck that will make i don't know how you can do that and still be competitive because commander is becoming more and more complex and wizards is cramming more and more onto cards so i feel bad for you because it's to the point where even people who can track complex things have a hard time keeping up with it i'm used to a high level of complexity i play the cube with my friends and we will layer in vanguard plane chase and arch enemy all into the same game right so i'm used to there being a million things going on but they put so many things on cards now that sometimes just reading through the card i've already forgotten one of the abilities at the top of the card so i don't know how you can stay current and also find something that's going to help you keep track of the multitasking and the four player aspect perhaps you'd be better off playing brawl where you only have to play against one person, but it still maintains the commander aspect, or maybe even just one-on-one -on -one commander, right? But I don't, I don't have a particularly good suggestion for commanders. If you want a fun one from Legends, Hazes on Tamar is like my go-to choice, right? He's pretty straightforward. 
After he comes out, he makes a bunch of 1-1s equal to the number of lands you have. When he goes, you lose all those tokens. That's it. That's a little bit of trigger action. It's got power you can play around with, but maybe not too much for you. You know? Oh, Ape says, coup d'etat! But you got coup d'etat by Mr. Bill. You were going to steal the board from Shelly, but it got stolen in advance. But I thank you for the super chat and the attempt to dethrone Shelly. So yeah, that's gotta, it's got to be challenging. It's got to be challenging to deal with having a mind that is slipping to a degree and trying to keep up with what's going on with Magic because they are making like a, a billion ability cards now. And also, they're not spending the time they used to to make sure the cards are worded in a clear way. Like, who was, what's the name of the card? Is it Lagrella the Magpie? Something like that. From Capanna. Now, what this card is supposed to do, when it comes out, it's supposed to let you exile one creature from each player. But, but the way that it seems to most people when they read it is that you can exile any number of creatures from every player, which is not how it works. But I can understand why people think that, because when you read it, it really feels like that. Like... The cases from Markov Manor, for example, the way that cases get solved is by meeting particular conditions. But the way that cases are worded makes it sound like it automatically gets solved at the end of the turn, even if you didn't do those conditions, right? And it's just Wizards Wizards doesn't care as much anymore. They just go, you figure it out, whatever. We got a billion cards to make. We're not even going to spend the time playtesting them anymore. It's pretty frustrating. Lesson learned, don't try and run a revolution on a shoestring budget. Break stop, you're right. Pretty accurate as most coups do fail. True. True. So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what commander specifically to suggest, but I would say pick, a, pick one that has just like one ability. Pick one that has one ability that's very easy to understand and is hard to misinterpret. Hayes is on is really straightforward, right? Like you can get you can get a little silly with his ability because it's like a trigger for the next turn or whatever, but ultimately it's very straightforward. So I would say pick any commander that you understand the first time you read it. If you read it, like if you've never seen the card before, you read it once and you get it, that feels like a reasonable choice. If it's somebody who you read it and you don't understand it, then you're going to, if, if especially if your mind's slipping, you're just going to have an increased chance of not getting it, you know? Yeah, Millmaster, the fact that they use contracted people for playtesting is of genuine concern. It means that they, they're regular, because they have regular playtesters, but the Future Future League can't keep up with the insane production pace that Wizards of the Coast has, Right? And they just, they don't care. And when you combine that with the fact that they're very hesitant to ban cards until the product is completely sold through. Look at the one ring. Like most of the time when they ban something, it's because it's showing up too often in too many decks. And the one ring, the reason they gave for not banning it was we know it's in a lot of decks, but it can go in more. And it's like, can you not insult our intelligence, please? Can you straight up just be real with us here? Like 100%? I would respect it more if they just went, we're not banning this card because we got a lot of product to sell. Like, because that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not like the one ring brings something useful to the meta and it's just like, well, actually, there was a problem with modern and whatever and now, like, this is really helping to shore it up and make it better. And the fact that everybody, like... You're literally restricting Urza's saga because it goes into like, oh, everybody can use it with no real downside and whatever else. And the one ring is like, okay, where's the downside? No, we made a super pushed, crazy, powerful card. Everybody's using it. And we've got the Lord of the Rings license for a while. And they probably have a reprint in the works and they want to sell that too, right? So that's like, they balancing the game isn't important. Things have to be drastic before they'll step in, right? Oko had to take over 75% of the meta before they were willing to step in. And they were like, we screwed up Oko because we didn't, like, 
we didn't think about you using the ability on your opponent's stuff. What? You you didn't think about me using this card against my 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 opponent. Did you just say that? Did you just say that? Like I feel like I'm going crazy. People were getting upset at me because I talked about the insanity of the Nadu situation where the modern expert was just like, look, I didn't know what was going to happen with Nadu because it was supposed to be a commander card, okay? And like, we changed it at the last second. I didn't understand the text box and we didn't test it at all. And then we just put it out. And I'm supposed to go, congratulations on the bravery you had to tell us this. You guys shouldn't get upset at what they're saying because then they won't be honest with us. Listen, it's not honesty that I value. It's a properly balanced game where they give a fuck, right? That's what I value. I value not being treated like an idiot where they go, Fuck them. We're going to sell them a product for twice the price where, where we're just like, oh, we didn't test anything. Motherfucker, what? Well, okay, hold on. Let's back it up. We tested it enough to make sure it was broken enough to force its way into modern that you'd have to buy it. Other than that, whatever. And so it's like, so this card that broke modern wasn't even designed for modern? Nope. We didn't even think about it for modern. In a set dedicated to modern. Well, we had to make sure we aim cards at Commander. No, you don't. No, you don't. Commander grew out of not being paid attention to at all. Commander became the biggest format all on its own by being ignored and picking and choosing whatever it wanted. You don't need to focus on it with this singularity that ruins your other formats, you greedy dumb fuck clowns. Heavy metal, get Castlevania on, on your Steam Deck, buddy. Go with that. Go with that. Joe, yeah, of course there's people out there. Look, never underestimate how stupid some people can be. And they're getting angry at me because I won't accept the crap that Wizards is pulling. It's like, they just admitted they didn't test the card at all. The important part is that they admitted it. No, the important part is to balance the game, idiot. How do you accept this? How do you turn around and go, well, you completely screwed up. You know what, bro? You burned my house down. And pissed on my dead dog. But I'm not mad because you admitted it. And admitting it is really important. And if I got mad about this, you might not admit it the next time you burn my house down. Don't burn the fucking house down. Don't piss on my dog. Like, I'm not unreasonable for having that position. That is a very reasonable position to have. It's crazy to me. That it's like, well, we have this unprecedented level of access to behind the scenes information and does that make it not a problem to you because that doesn't unbreak modern that doesn't stop them from doing this again don't you understand this process is accelerating they're literally printing things like circular logic a counterspell a counterspell that's just a reprint as a sorcery in a secret layer like that's how little they're paying attention to anything to anything. And I'm just supposed to be like, wow, good job admitting your mistakes. Oh, I'm definitely going to learn from this. Are you though? Are you? Is it going to change anything? Like Wizards literally has people inside the company going, hi, I'm uh, like a legacy expert and grief is a huge problem. Okay, you should do something about it. We are going to do something about it. Oh, great. You're going to ban it? No, actually, we're going to put it as a special guest in Modern Horizons 3. Sorry, what? Yeah, we're going to print it and sell it some more. No, this card's a real problem. Yeah, we heard you. Anyways, off to sell it. And it's like, are you, you're out of your fucking mind. They resent. They resent cards having casting costs. They resent having to balance things. They, uh, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't accept it. I can't. I can't. It's, it's so aggravating. It's so aggravating to just straight up be lied to. They lie to us all the time. They desperately don't want you to have any format that they can't fuck up, right? They did it on Arena too. They, they dragged their feet 
about creating any format outside of standard. They dragged their feet until the last possible moment. And then they created historic and went, okay, fine, here's a non-rotating format. But you got to pay double price for everything. And people are like, what? Shut up, idiot. And like, okay, regular price for that. You can have your non-rotating format. And then they came along with alchemy because they were pissed off that their attempts to turn Magic Arena into a big esport. They wanted Magic Arena to be a big esport. They made videos going, they will know your name, you'll be a champ on the stage. But like, we're not gonna we're not gonna make sure our client works. And on top of that, we're not gonna create a separate client for the pro tour or anything like that. We're not gonna have spectator mode. We're not gonna have anything that will be expected of an esport because you have to understand, we're Magic the Gathering. We're lazy and arrogant and entitled and we're bringing that mentality to arena because we're used to being the kings of the card game world so obviously when we come thing right like obviously when we come to the digital world it's going to be a thing that's really annoying i just accidentally hit the space bar and that stopped the recording of this stream which means now i've got to take the two chunks of the stream and stitch them together before i can upload this stream afterwards onto my stream archive by the way since i mentioned it i may as well share the link for it if you missed any part of this, you want to see it in its entirety, it will be available over on my live stream archive. I can't believe that just hitting a space bar stopped the recording. I guess I'm lucky that I didn't accidentally just stop the stream, but man, is that annoying. It's going to take a lot longer now to get this put together and uploaded, and that really aches my sack, man. It aches my sack. So yeah, what was I saying? Wizards of the Coast wanted to be esports, but through their pure arrogance, they were just like, we're going to have the Pro Tour on there. How do you get onto the Pro Tour? We don't know. Why are you asking us? You want people to aspire to get onto the Pro Tour. Well, it's 20 people that we picked, but we made them sign contracts saying they're not allowed to talk smack about us. Oh, okay. And are you going to... Like, make sure your client works properly and create something for the pros to play and stuff? No, we're magic. We're going to underpay our developers because we're Magic the Gathering. Like, the guy who was in charge of developing Arena came out with arrogance that he had picked up from the company. You could tell. He was like, of course it's going to cost more than other games because it's magic. This is digital. You're not selling us cards. You don't get to rob us. This is nonsense. So when that all fell apart, they went, we're going to make Arena into Hearthstone. And we don't want to give people wild cards and stuff. The, the whole, you know, people ask about a dusting system. And because they don't want to, you know, be stuck with cards they're not going to use. Oh, like what, 20 copies of Opt? Like a bunch of us have who have been playing Arena for a while. But we don't want people to have dusting because just dusting is destroying cards. That's inherently destructive. And we don't want people thinking about negative things like that. So you, I can set people on fire, electrocute them, murder them, pop their heads off in a grisly spectacle. Yeah, you can do all that. None of that's destructive, is it? Like, why are you, why are you telling us these lies? Well, no, we're creating alchemy because it gives us the ability to balance cards. Instead of banning cards, we can just balance them. And then we don't have to do bannings anymore. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, I noticed that there's this combo going on with Grinning Ignis and these other cards. Yeah, we got to do something about that combo. Here's what we're going to do. So um, Grinning Ignis is like a problem with the combo. And like if we change Grinning Ignis, the combo won't work. So we want to stop the combo. So we're banning Grinning Ignis. And it's like, sorry, what did you just say? You just told us that if you change Grinning Ignis, it fixes the problem. And to fix the problem, you're going to ban Grinning Ignis in a format where we don't need bans. Why are you banning Grinning Ignis? Well, giving you guys uncommon wild cards is worthless, and it costs us money to have a programmer fix this. So the real truth is, we just want to rebalance rares and stuff to stop you from getting rare wild cards. It's not about having a balanced format at all. It's about giving you less fuck you. Right? And so that's the mentality of it. So they just forced it into historic. They went, not only does alchemy exist, but you know your non-rotating format. Now we can change anything. It is a rotating format. Isn't that great? Why is everybody leaving? Why is everybody leaving? Like <laughs> alchemy could have worked if they didn't do things the way they did. Right? And slowly but surely it's getting some more adoption of it. But ultimately 
they're out of their minds. They just blatantly lie to us. They have no problems lying to us, 100%. 100%. And they, they think we're idiots. They think we're idiots. Colton, how they get the popper players is to just any, oh, you got a really valuable common? Guess what? It's rare now. Why is Ristic Study a rare now instead of a common? Right? They just want to make it scarcer and more expensive. That's it. That's it. That, that's the deal. That's the deal. So yeah, they just they just lie to us at every angle. Every angle. And they try and hose us over in every greedy little way. Just tweak the knobs to hose them a little more. Do it quietly with this. Oh, we're just doing this. We're just doing this. Oh, now we're printing direct to modern sets. Not with the intent of making modern better. They're just like, hey, we see that format over there and it looks like you guys aren't buying enough packs. So we're going to make cards that are straight for that format. And also it costs double. Why does Modern Horizons cost double? Well, because Modern needs to be an expensive format and secondary market prices need to be high. Why? Why? There's no reason for it other than they just want more money. Other than they think they can get away with it. It's a diminishing returns kind of thing. The whole point of Modern was to retain Magic players when they got tired of running in the standard treadmill and the planned obsolescence of standard was too much for somebody. We're like, I had a $600 deck. I can't play any of it. Now you want me to spend another $600 to play this format? I just want to keep playing with these cards. I'm going to play with them modern where I can. And Wizards went, well, what if we ruined modern? What if we made it so that insanely crazy powerful cards were coming out and were legal in it and all the stuff you love is now completely outmoded and you just can't use it? And how about we just keep doing that over and over and over? Hasn't Ragavan diminished in presence quite a bit when he was this big thing? Like, they're power creeping, they're power creep to insane degrees. They make things like Orcish Bowmasters, which invalidates a whole bunch of one toughness creatures. And their response is, don't worry, we've taken into account with card design going forwards. And that is not, we're going to stop making insane broken stuff like Bowmasters. It's now we're giving creatures two toughness so they're safe from Bowmasters. <laughs> oh, how's this going to go? You're just going to end up making a Bowmasters that's even stronger and does two damage. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> they don't think we're dumb. They think we're sacks of water with wallets they deserve. There you go. There you go. Tim, no, Wizards isn't trying to kill their games. See, that doesn't make sense. If they were trying to destroy their game, they'd stop making product. If you want to destroy magic, it's as simple as going, we're not making magic anymore. So that doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. No, they're high on crack, and they believe that they can extract infinite money from us. That's what it is. They don't want to kill magic. They want magic to go on forever. They want you to buy $1,000 booster boxes that have four packs in them. You know what? <laughs> That's it. That's it. They definitely don't want to destroy this cash cow. They desperately need the money for Hasbro. That's the reality. That's the reality. This is not intentional destruction. This is haphazard dumb fuckery, where they turn around and go, Hey, guys. Why do you think nobody's playing standard anymore? Geez, I don't know, because you stopped designing for standard and you went, every standard set has to have cards for every format. It's got to have stuff for modern and it's got to have stuff for commander. It's got to have all of that. Oh, well, that leads to standard being totally unbalanced. But we don't want to ban these standard cards because if we do that, then like the people are going to stop playing standard. Hey, why is nobody buying our standard products? Oh, I know. We'll just make standard a year longer. We got lots of great plans. We got lots of great plans to make standard better. What are the plans? We're not going to do any bannings and we're going to add a whole another year's worth of cards in. So it's going to be more unbalanced. Yeah, but like, no bans. Oh, okay. Why would I get in on this? Why? Because we want money, bro. We want money. I know we got everybody playing on Arena because... We strong-armed all the LGSs into handing over their players or they'd lose their WPN status. We know we shepherded everybody onto Arena and made that the place to play standard. But you have to understand that in our business model, in our minds, it went like this. You're going to go on Arena and you're going to give us a bunch of money and you're going to spend all that money that you were already spending on paper, right? So that's what you need to be doing. Why aren't you doing that? That was our business plan was. Why aren't you sticking to the plan? And it's like somebody will start playing arena and they'll be like, oh, because I've heard this. You hear this from people who run LGSs. They'll come in and be like, man, I really like magic. I've been having a lot of fun on arena. I'm ready to try paper magic. I want to build my deck. So 
I need to get the cards from my deck. It's like, what are you playing? Oh, I got this Shieldred build. Okay, so how many Shieldreds do you need? I need four Shieldreds. Okay, that'll be $400. What? Do I... What? 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 Just for those four cards? No, it's okay. I guess I don't want to play Paper Magic. You know what I mean? Like, and now Wizards is turning around selling actual decks on Arena that cost more than if you physically bought the cards. Everything is insane now. Everything is insane. It's ridiculous. Wizards has spread magic too thin like butter scraped over too much bread. Doesn't sound wrong to me. Nathan, what's up, buddy? Heading out to get some work done? All right, have a good one, my friend. So everything is a mess right now. Everything is a mess. I mean, you can play Magic for free now. Arena, Arena isn't purely bad 100% across the board, right? If you're somebody who just wants to play some Magic and dick around or whatever, Arena's totally fine. I've been playing Arena for years. There have been times where I've gotten annoyed with it and left. Like, the whole alchemy push into Historic really just made me go, I'm out of here. And there have been other times where it's super buggy. But at the end of the day, I've been playing Arena pretty much every day for the last five, six months. I got a ton of resources on there. Over half a million gold gems, like dozen draft tokens, all kinds of stuff. So you can play and have fun with Arena. But Wizards is trying everything they can to extract money from you and... They're not, they're not maintaining arena like they should, right? It's, it's slower and buggier than it was. And there's all these little load screens in between everything that make me think about playing Skyrim on the PlayStation 3 like 20 years ago or however long ago it was. Probably wasn't 20 years, probably like 15 years ago or whatever. But it's like that. It's like that. Where it's just like poor buggy crap. They're not, they're not going to put the money in to really make it better. And so Arena's like fine, but I wouldn't put any money in it. How much money did I spend on Arena? Coffee? Zero. I put zero dollars into Arena. I absolutely refuse to spend money on digital stuff like that. But I'm not saying nobody should. Everybody has to make their own value decision. For some people, they're like, yo, I can't get out to a game store. I can get into a draft relatively cheap compared to playing in person. I don't have to worry about going somewhere. I can draft on my own schedule. There are a lot of things like that that I, I can understand. why pe like Some people have way more money than me too. So it's just like, yeah, I can toss money down on this. Whatever. It's no big deal. This is my entertainment money. This is what I choose to spend it on. That's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. I'm not against that for other people. I am against it for me. I enjoy the whole, I'm going to play your free-to-play game, and I'm never going to give you a penny. I basically contribute by being someone who's there playing games, so that the people who are play paying, there's a critical mass of people to play with. And I just build my collection out slowly. That means that I don't get to play with the stuff when it comes out right away. And I used to have a method of building out entire sets through free play. It was possible. But I realized with Bloombro, it's now impossible because of the accelerated release schedule. It's impossible as a free-to-play player. Well, I'll put an asterisk up there. It's virtually impossible as a free-to-play player to build out an entire set for free. If you are genuinely good at Magic and willing to put a bunch of time into it, you can grind in a bunch of competitive events to earn the golden gems you would need to fill out a complete set. But you would have to probably spend four or five hours a day every day playing to accomplish that. So you used to be able to collect complete, like at least rare complete, if not mythic rare complete sets as they came out through drafting and free play. That's no longer reality, but I will not put a single penny into arena. And I have tons and tons of cards. I have a bunch of the older sets completed. Like right now in my arena account, I have 40 Bloomboro boosters, 91 Thunder Junction boosters, and about 40 more random boosters from other sets, all sitting there unopened. 520,000 gold, 10,000 gems. My vault is like 60% complete. I've got 100 mythic rare wild cards, 200 rare wild cards, hundreds and hundreds of common and uncommon wild cards, 12 player draft tokens, a jump in token, a ton of the pets, a ton of styles. Although I don't value styles, I just accept them as part of other things that are worth getting, you know? So 
But I like to play Magic. I just enjoy playing it. And genuinely, Magic has gotten so accelerated and crazy that I find myself drawn to playing the starter decks. You know how there's 10 different starter decks you can play against each other? I play a lot with those because it it limits the relative power level overall. And even those decks can completely blow your opponent out by like the fourth turn, which is absolutely wild. It's absolutely wild. Those decks can blow out. But I don't find it fun to play one minute games where somebody jerks off on my chest with a slick shot. You know what I mean? Like it's coin flip magic a lot of the time when it comes to like competitive standard and stuff. So I like to play sealed like draft events and things like that where the power level can sometimes be crazy and swingy, but you get you get more actual game. You know what I mean? Like where you actually play the game of magic and have a back and forth instead of one person just elbow dropping from the top ropes on the other guy just going, you know, like that's that's how it feels. So, yeah. I like Arena for being able to play for free. I like the convenience of it. Like, there are certain things about Arena I definitely enjoy. But it's it's monetization is something that I don't really like. But I do like the fact that you can play Magic for free any day as much as you want. On top of that, on top of just giving you the 10 starter decks to play with, Every day you can just win more cards. You can just win more cards and resources you can use to get booster packs or to play in drafts. You can earn yourself a free draft every week just by playing Magic. And you get to keep the cards from the draft. Like, there are certain things that absolutely are attractive about Arena. Like, as far as free-to-play games go, I played some egregious ones where at a certain point they run you up against a wall. And if you don't spend money, you're done. You don't get to play this anymore. There's no progress. There's no point. Arena's not like that, but it also doesn't let you do everything, and it is set up in a way to totally milk new people hardcore who don't understand and like are buying wild cards and all that stuff. There's, it's easy to get robbed by Arena, as far as I'm concerned, 100%. Coffee, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know about the whole... Are they programming it in a way where they make it easier and like you're going to win if you spend money and whatever? Who knows? Who knows? It's theoretically possible. The company is scuzzy and there's literally no way to prove what order of like cards were in your deck or whatever else. People also have inherent biases where they discard particular information and focus on other information. So without somebody who actually works there coming outright and saying that they're doing it, there's no way to know. I've played lots of physical magic. I've played lots of digital magic. You get hosed in both. You get mana hosed or mana flooded in both. And you could easily just argue the other way where they hose the people who spend money because, oh, hey, oh, you're not winning as much as you want to. Well, maybe if you spend some more money, you will. But the people who aren't spending money, if you hose them and they stop playing, then you don't have them. You're just eroding your player base. So it cuts both ways. And it's impossible to say. I don't know. I don't know. But overall, it feels pretty similar to normal magic with the exception of you never really get stuck with hands with no lands in them, right? I don't play best of three, so maybe in that you do. But overall, you definitely, like, they definitely modify your starting hand. That is, there's no question about that. But it doesn't feel like I've been free playing it for years and I don't feel like I'm somehow at a disadvantage because of it. So if they're doing it, it's not to the level where it feels that way to me. But there's no way to know for sure. There's no way to know for sure. They can do whatever they want, right? Who knows? I'm sure they spend a bunch of time trying to figure out the exact ways to manipulate into whatever. That's part of the reason why when you get progress towards gold packs... It shows you the little bar on the store icon with the little glowing orange, the same color as the notification diamonds that they have. So your eyes will be drawn to it. Occasionally it flashes to draw your eye. Oh, what's that? To look at the store, to think about maybe going and buying in. They definitely do multiple things to try and manipulate you into spending money. There is no question about that. 100%. But I absolutely refuse because... 
I own a ton of like physical magic cards and this digital stuff goes as soon as Wizards decides Arena's not worth it anymore. You don't own the stuff, right? Like you don't own it at all. You just you got the stuff in a game. Which on one hand is fine, whatever. You know, you play it while it's there. I don't expect to own the stuff afterwards. I don't care. I don't really care. But I'm not willing, like, I'm not going to put $50 into Arena when I could buy two or three good indie games, right? Like, why would I spend $50 on Arena when I could get, like, Moonstone Island, Inscription, and Stacklands probably all together for less than that? And those three games kick Arena in the dick, you know what I mean? So, it's like everyone has different valuations. Everyone makes different levels of money. I am not a rich man. Maybe, you know what, if I had shit loads of money, maybe I would dump money on Arena because I wouldn't care. But money is precious to me. I've got, I've got bills to pay for. I've got a disabled wife to take care of. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to piss my money away on Arena. And I like, I think Wizards deserves to be rewarded for the things they're doing right. Like grabbing Bloomboro feels good because Bloomboro's great, right? But stuff that's garbage... Them getting financially rewarded for Markov Manor, for example, that feels bad. That feels bad. They don't deserve a reward for screwing up Capenna by taking out all the policemen and then deciding they wanted to use all that artwork they had kicking around because they paid for it and shoving detectives into Ravnica, destroying Ravnica's identity, acting like these detectives are a big thing, even though by their own story logic, they don't make sense in the world. And then when we return to Ravnica... The, the detective agency won't even be a thing. It was the center of everything when we were there. And they won't even be a whisper the next time we go back, right? Because it's not about any kind of cohesiveness. It's not about delivering a good experience to the customer. It's how do we save money? How do we get the most money? That's it. That's it. Larry, you left magic because it's grindy, grinding to finish quests, grinding to get gems for styles. Ooh, gems for styles. Oof, no. Grinding to get boosters, it's grindy. Well, that that is something that can happen if you end up focusing on the like if you're playing magic not to play magic, but you're playing magic to get a reward, then everything that gets in your way of getting that reward feels like a frustration. You want your games of magic to end swiftly so that you can get your gold or your experience so you can move on to your next game so you can quickly get your reward for your gold, your experience. And at that point, instead of playing magic, you've accepted a job grinding for fake virtual currency. And there were part, there was, there was a point, I think maybe like a year and a half ago when I was playing arena and I went, am I having fun right now? Or am I just logging in to get gold and experience and stuff like that. And it felt like at that point, that's what I was doing. And so I stopped playing then. And ever since then, I've been mindful of that. If I ever feel like I'm playing magic for any reason other than I feel like playing a game right now and I'm choosing to play magic, I just shut it off. But I haven't felt that way for like the last six months I've been playing. I've been playing to enjoy myself. And choosing the experiences that I engage with has made a big difference, right? So... When you're playing to play Magic and you get those rewards, it's not grindy. It's a side bonus. Oh, I'm having fun playing Magic. And look, they're giving me gold that I can use to buy more play experiences like drafts and build up my collection, have more cards to mess around with. Cool. But if you're just sitting there going, I don't like playing these decks. I don't like playing my deck. Come on, I just want to win. Come on, I got 10 minutes before I got to go. I need to get another win to hit the, you know, like that's not fun. That's frustration, right? You feel like you're missing out. You feel like you have to log in. But I've been playing Arena for an hour or two a day for months. For months. And like today, I played until I got up to four wins. And then I went, I got some other stuff I want to do. And then an hour later, I was back going, yeah, you know what? I feel like playing some more Magic. And I played and I was up to like 10 wins. And I'm like, oh, cool. I got all the experience wins. I had some fun. I'm going to go do some other stuff. And then Carly was making dinner. And I'm like... I don't have anything I need or want to do at this moment because um, I spent some time reading some Dusk Morn stories and doing some other work-related stuff. And then I went, I'm, I'm down for some more arena. And I played and I got up to like the 15 win rewards for the day, played a few more games and I was like, yeah, I'm good. And that was it for the day. So it can be grindy if you're not paying attention to why you're doing what you're doing. And if you feel like it's grindy and you feel like it's a chore, you don't want to be doing it, right? 
Zircon, you refuse to play anything with a daily quest. If you enjoy it at the start, it'll start to feel like a job or you miss out if you don't. Well, it's good to know what makes you feel like a particular way and ensure that you're not um, that you're not dealing with anything like that. But for me, I don't feel that way. So if I did, like I discovered before, I'd just be like, it's all good. Like I have over half a million gold in my account now. I know I could walk away from Arena for like a year and then come back later and play with it if I want to. I stayed away for like a year and a half. And when I came back, I had like 20,000 some odd gems. And I used them to buy multiple mastery paths and stuff. Used up some of those gems. Still have like nine, ten thousand gems. And enough gold to do like a hundred and two or three drafts. I can do like a hundred drafts. Actually, a hundred and fifteen if you include my draft tokens and stuff. I could draft endlessly. So if I jump out, I can jump back in whenever, you know? But it's good to know... Like, who you are and what you're about, so you can choose not to engage with things that are making you unhappy. I can't believe I screwed up this recording. That's really obnoxious to me. Oh, man. All right. Oh, well, that's fine. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it, 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 like, it just means that it's probably going to take, like, an extra hour of processing before this will be available to go up afterwards. And let's just see here. I'm just going to pop this in in advance to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, Williams, what do I think is needed to bring back organized play? I don't, I don't know what wizards can do to bring back, like... It doesn't matter, actually. It doesn't matter because Wizards is purely focused on Commander now. Magic is never going to go back to what it was. This is something that happens in life that you just have to accept. Things will change and they won't return to what they were. So you will never... Magic will never be standard is the biggest thing ever again. It's going to be Commander forever. Nothing else will be allowed to give, like, to have breathing room... And Commander will never change into anything else. So Magic will always be dominated by Commander. And Power Creep will be an ever-spiraling thing. And that will not stop. Like, I don't see I don't see it stopping ever. Ever. Wizards will do this forever. Right? They'll, they'll try and get Standard and stuff going as well. But it'll never be the premier thing. Standard will never be the entry point to Magic again. It will never be the way that they lead players into the game. Those days are over. Vince, how do you get free gems? Well, the easiest way to get free gems, as far as I'm concerned, is drafting. Now, that's how I did it in the past, and it was the only way to get free gems. But Wizards, after they screwed up with Alchemy, they had to revamp their economy, and now you can also farm gems by playing in competitive constructed events. But for me, the easiest path to gems and the most enjoyable path to gems is you build up your gold. When you have 5,000 gold, you play in a draft, right? That draft guarantees you a minimum of 50 gems, even if you lose every game. And even if you're terrible at drafting, that's fine. Because by playing the draft, you will automatically become better at the draft. You don't have to spend your time trying to analyze things. You don't have to spend your time trying to focus on becoming an amazing drafter. All you have to do is pay attention to what people are beating you with. If you notice, yo, I keep getting beat by this stupid Pegasus. Then you go, wait a minute. The Pegasus is really good in the draft. So when you see the Pegasus show up, you go, yoink, I'm playing that. All you have to do is emulate what people are using to beat you down with. You play in X number of drafts, you're going to understand what the, what the best stuff is because it's going to be beating you down, right? So... Even if you're afraid of the whole, I'm no good at drafting. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You get more cards for your collection by drafting. You get gems. And sometimes you're going to luck out and clean sweep it. You're going to get seven wins. And you're going to get 950 gems. And you can do that just rare drafting. I know that because I've proved it. I've, I've done it myself multiple times on Arena. I did it on a live stream the one time. I remember Desolator talking about it in a video afterwards going, I don't know how he did it. He just rare drafted. And then he won the whole draft. I've done that in physical magic as well. So, like, you can totally... You don't have to be a drafting expert, really. All you really need to do when it comes to draft is pay attention to removal and evasion. Grab all the rares. Grab creature destruction spells. 
Grab creatures that have flying, creatures that can't be blocked, creatures that have menace. That's it. That's it. Most drafts come down to who's got creatures that can get through to your opponent and who has removal to get rid of those creatures or other creatures in your way. Drafting isn't nearly as complicated as people make it. You'll hear all this, you got to figure out what lane you are and stay in your lane and all that stuff. Horseshit. Horseshit. Doesn't matter. Like, yeah, if you want to be the best drafter in the world, then learning everything you can, sure. But you don't need all that. You don't need all that. Not at all. Not at all. Just play in drafts. Just play in drafts. Don't, don't spend your gold every day buying a booster pack. You can buy five booster packs for 5,000 gold, or you can enter into a draft where you get three booster packs for playing, and they're bigger booster packs that have more cards in them. You get one booster pack just for being in the event, so that's four packs all by itself, and you get 50 gems. Plus, you can win another booster pack in the bot drafts, which will make it so that now you've got those five packs, and you win an increasing amount of gems on top of getting the fun of playing in a draft. Why have standard if commander is supreme? Because not everybody wants to play commander and wizards wants all the money. That's why. There's a bunch of people who don't have interest in four player games with the politics that involves you dealing with everybody else's nonsense and making deals and going, I got to attack you for two and I got to do this. There's some people who just want to play one on one. Let's take each other down. Right? Like that's it. It's like commander is like you, you like to play chess. Well, instead of playing one-on-one -on -one chess, we're playing like this crazy random everybody's. we got four people and everyone's moving pieces all over the place. And you're like, what even is this? What even is this? Commander, in a way, isn't Magic the Gathering. Commander is its own thing, right? So Commander has the appeal of a more casual board game to a bunch of people. And in some ways, there's less pressure on you because it's not on one-on-one -on -one whatever, you know? And it can be a more social experience. So Magic... Magic caters to a number of different types of people and they want all of those people's money. And standard players for the longest time would spend a lot of money and keep getting back in the hamster wheel buying year after year. So it's desirable to have a standard format, especially in paper, right? And I mean, look at Arena. Or no, Like they can put Commander on Arena and I bet you Standard would still be bigger, right? I don't think the Commander on Arena is ever going to be as big as Commander in paper. Pradeep, I don't know about that, man. The whole commander, you have to get old cards to be able to compete isn't really true anymore. The power creep level of the game is such that the new stuff they're making is bonkers. And while there may be a few cards from the old school times that you would like to have, they aren't necessary to be competitive. And you can just use proxies in commander, right? You don't even, you don't even have to have like the real genuine article magic cards. That's just the reality of it. That's just the reality of it. So yeah, I like I like Arena for certain aspects of it, and I dislike other aspects of it, but I refuse to give Wizards any money for that because I'm not getting anything out of it that I feel is worth the money. Not like, real magic cards are the real deal for me. That's my preference. But again, people who want to spend money on that, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's true. Arena is pretty buggy, and to put Commander on it would strain everything too much. They would have to rebuild everything, 100%. 100%. And with Commander as well, like the playgroup that you're playing with, right? If you're just like, it depends on the people that you're playing with. Some people have playgroups where they have decks full of expensive cards, and some playgroups have people who barely have... Like, they have jumped up pre-cons, where it's like, eh, I've added a little bit into this pre-con. It's a big, wide open kind of thing. It's not, Commander's not rigid the same way that Standard is, but Wizards really does run the risk of adding more rigidity to it with their constant power creeping to the point where, like, they're not designing cards for Commander that add interesting new options. They're creating cards for Commander that are essentially must-haves. Like, look at Arcane Signet. Look at how many decks are going to run Arcane Signet, where before they would go with Talismans, because it's like, well, it gives me access to two colors for only two mana. And Arcane Signet outmodes all of them. It gives you access to every color of your deck, every time, with no drawbacks. It's just straight up 
strictly better for a commander, right? So the way we're going, it's just going to keep keep accelerating. There's no there's no hitting the brakes on this. Wizards decided casual commander is king. And that's where the that's where they're going to focus mostly. They want the other things to work as well, but they're always going to put commander first. And so that's going to keep damaging the other formats. They the they they don't seem willing to accept that reality where it's like we want our standard sets to have a bunch of cards for commander but the cards to be good enough for commander have to be inherently too strong for standard and it's just like oh what are you idiots doing you know like they just make cards crazier and crazier here you go here's a bat it's one black and one when it comes into play look at your opponent's hand pick a card remove it until the bat's gone also we slap lifelink on it so it's just evasive and causes a two-point life swing with your opponent losing a life and you gaining a life every time you swing with it. You get the information of everything in their hand and you take their best card from them for two mana. Like it's nothing. And that's just a regular old standard card. It's like we've come a long way from the days of like things like Mesmeric Fiend, which was the same thing for a 1-2 that didn't fly and didn't have lifelink. <laughs> you know, like... And that's just the common... So, it's a wide, wild world that magic has become. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's getting progressively worse, you know? So, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know what the future looks like 100%. I don't know where it's going to go from here. I mean, I know that it's going to get worse, but I don't know where the, like, does it just keep getting worse and the power accelerates like this for 20 years or do they try and reconfigure into something else i have no idea magic has existed for 30 years it's really like unique yeah there are other card games and whatever but nothing is magic so there were certain things about magic i predicted and was 100 percent right on you know what i mean you go back and watch the video i made talking about the three years of magic gonna be a nightmare I knew what I was talking about. People watch it and went, bro, you're right about all this stuff. But there's other stuff. Who knows? Who knows how it's going to turn out? It's a, it's, a, it's a very different beast than when I started 30 years ago. In some ways, it's better. In a number of other ways, it's much worse, right? It was a weird little noise my stomach made. It went, <laughs> like Mario dying. Oh no, is this the end for me? I hope you guys enjoyed my last stream ever because apparently this is the this is the end of my life. <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up. Thanks for coming and hanging out, my friends. It has indeed been an experience. It's been nice chatting with you. This live stream will be available up on my live stream archive after I get it processed. Here's the link for the archive if you want to check that out. There's a bunch of live streams up over there. So, that being said, I'm going to hop on into the waters. Peace out for now.